I am going to uh, welcome everyone today and uh, and let you know that we welcome you. We are glad to have you join us today. We know that that we will be uh, learning a few tips and tricks and uh, and possibly even uh recognize the need to take things a, a step further after we after we do this today and so there is a uh, a slido poll open on the screen and uh and i we will be monitoring the chat so that you can um, put any questions you want in there or can raise your hand and our host will be able to unmute you if you want to um want to ask a question or make a comment. So with that, I'm going to turn off my video and my mic again, sorry about that, and turn this over to uh, uh, to Linnell Forrest. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Um, hello, my name is Linnell Forrest, and today we'll be going over tools to view and track your students' grades and progress within Canvas Analytics. And uh, we have a poll up there, and um, let me see if I can share what we've gotten so far with the poll. I hope everybody can see that. Um, we've got uh, someone who's going to be using Canvas. Looks like for the first time, they're not, let me see. I'm not sure if my previous answer said, I, I'm new to Canvas and will be using Canvas for our high school math day contest. And some people said messages and email and, um, they, they monitor their, monitor their uh, students' progress to the grade center. I'm going to stop sharing that. Okay, so and then what this is about is, is a little bit step further than um, the grade center, and it is a, actually somewhat, I would say, separate. What we're going to explore today is um, something that just came out that's called New Analytics. And it's a new application that just came out in March. So in today's presentation, I would like to briefly talk about the analytics of the past and of the present. I won't be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of each. I'll be mentioning some information about the former uh, app called the View Analytics, and I'll be diving into the new analytics app feature, uh, like the features like participation, reports, and messaging. So what can we see from a bird's eye view? How do we see our students' journey in our Canvas course? Can data help us as instructors to see the direction of a student's path? And how can analytics help an instructor lead students on the path of success? And sometimes it's good to take a step back to see the whole picture. Um, and a great position to do that is from an analytics point of view. So investigating our students' performance by looking at data and then drilling down into the specifics is one way we can observe from a distance and then zoom in to see the details. And stepping back and forth with these views can help us connect the dots. Activity, assignment, and grade data can all help us see patterns in our students' participation. And looking at our students individually to see their specific efforts and the timeliness of those efforts it may lead us into um, maybe messaging them at that time and see if we can help them along the way. So what's new? Canvas Analytics uh, has a new app called New Analytics, and it just came out in, in March. So in March 2020, most of us were requested not to return to camp campus, a less extreme necessity dictated. And this situation may have overshadowed, it, overshadowed uh, Canvas Instructor's release of a new app called New Analytics. And this app was universally released to all institutions on March 21st of this year, only a few months ago. So granted, we were all very busy at that time and we might have been distracted and may not have noticed. So the former version, uh, I put uh, an image of that, we can't get to it any longer. The former version of Canvas Analytics was called View Analytics, and it was replaced with a new app called new analytics. And so I put a link here uh, that discusses that, uh, that change. And I believe we're going to be sending out the PowerPoint later. So if anybody is curious, how do we get to this PowerPoint? We'll be uh, making um, that available to you after it's recorded. So some of us have used the former version of Canvas 
uh, analytics called view analytics, and we may have been happy with this type of view. However, there were instructors within can the Canvas community that asked instructure team to reimagine analytics and to make it more interesting. And the team responded by creating an environment that is more interactive, helpful, and visual. So the new analytics app was in beta since 2018 and was introduced uh, as beta in the InstructureCon uh, convention 2019 by keynote Mitch Benson. And I also put another link to that, uh, that keynote discussion to see uh, an overview of what was in beta at the time. So here are some new analytics features. Uh, we'll go over them a little bit to see what they look like. And I'll be sharing my screen later. Uh, you might even have some aha moments as we drill down into the test data. And I, can, I can't really show you real data because uh, that would include uh, student information, but I can show you test data. And so I built a test course and I wanna go through the tabs within that test course uh, and the test students that I created. Uh, I'll go through tabs like course grade, weekly online activity, and students with a, and the students area has a, a tab called communication. And I also would like to visit uh, something called reports. So here are a few ways to get to your new analytics app. If you have uh, the ability to be an instructor within uh, Canvas, you have access to this app. Um, you can create your own test courses if you want, and you can also uh, change your settings in, uh, for your Canvas uh, navigation. So there are a few ways to get to it. You can get it through the Canvas navigation. If it's not there, you can always change your settings. And, it's, and you can always find it, uh, when you click on Home, you should be able to find it on the right-hand side of the home page. So I built an example course, and over the last month or so, I completed assignments, discussions, and quizzes as each of 10 students within this course. And they're test students, they're not real students. And I called this course Linnell's course for testing things. And I'll share my screen to show uh, the location of the new analytics app. And we can click around to see what happens when we click around. So during this time when I'm sharing my screen, please type in any questions you might have in the chat. Um, and I would like to hear your thoughts. So if you want to speak, uh, raise your hand and um, I'm sure uh, someone will unmute you. And uh, please continue to the Slido um, uh, event so that I can see your thoughts. Okay, selecting data table or display shapes. Um, we're going to be doing that. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can see your uh, data in two different ways. And I, try, I suggest trying every option you have when you're in there to, to play around, to experiment, and to find out what you have with your, because um, you have access to real student data. And although if I were a teacher, I'd have access to, you know, to view that, but I don't. So I only have test examples. But you have access to your real student data, and you can see uh, as you go through the, the new app, uh, I, I believe there are a lot of aha moments going, ah, that's, that's what that means, or wow, I didn't know that existed. <laughs> so if there are uh, grade percentage ranges um, or something of interest, you can select the range and you can see students that are receiving a grade in that specific range. So I think maybe now's a good time to share my screen. It's gonna look a little like this. So I'm going to leave the PowerPoint just for a little bit and share my actual screen. But now while you are doing that, we have a question uh, saying that when we first transitioned to Canvas, this came from Renee, uh, it did not gather data from all devices. So we, uh, the question is whether or not it includes activity from mobile devices or only from the, uh, through the Canvas website. So I'm not sure if we know that. Um. Good question, because I did see, since this is relatively new, um, this has been available uh, out of beta, beta since March. And those questions have been raised amongst the uh, Canvas community. And um, I believe that that data is being captured because 
it's coming through the grade book. And I can show you a quick uh, reason why. Anything that's associated with the grade book is going to be in this area called course grade. And you, it, if it has a grade associated, it has a column associated with it in the grade book, it's going to be seen here as participation. So, for example, if, uh, if I go into my grades area, I can see that there's a lot of missing things in here. Uh, I did that on purpose, not to be mean, but just to, to show what you would see when um, things are excused and when uh, things are missed. You can actually get to uh, a specific student by clicking here and going right into the new analytics. So here I am, I'm looking at a specific student path and seeing uh, the details. And remember, I, I, I also want to go back and uh, take a look at the overall. So let's imagine uh, I want to look at a weekly activity. Do that. And I can see if they're active. If I want to see if I communicated with them, I can see the days that I've communicated. The, the, me as an instructor, or I as an instructor, <laughs> communicated with this person and when they communicated with me. So I did use um, several devices as a test student to come in, and I noticed that if it's got a grade, it's going to show up in the app. And you can isolate the graded content by selecting these tabs. If I just want to see quizzes, like, then I can zoom in on the quizzes. Quizzes and discussions, maybe just assignments and discussions, maybe just assignments. And as you drill down, you can see like bars and things like that, that you can uh, see the ranges. And if something's late, you can select this number, it does a count of how many students were late or, or maybe they missed it or maybe they received an 80% or something that you want to address. You can download that information with a CSV file and you can message them. So I'm going to message these two students and I can edit that. And I can say, uh, let's finish this project. And notice that they're uh, black car carbon copied. They don't know who else is receiving this message. The only person that knows that they're receiving the, the message and has that interaction is the instructor. So uh, you have different chart options located here in a menu. You can choose data table, or you can also drill down. Anything that's hyperlinked, you can drill down to to see more details. If you want to see shapes, these are the shapes that you can see. You can add different students. Something I'd like to do is go into the weekly, weekly online activity and see how everybody's doing. So it, in the shapes area, if we go back there, if you select a dot, you can drill down to more information and specifically the test user. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and go back. And this is where we were applying filters. These are all graded. Um, if it's not graded, it doesn't show up in this view. As you drill down through the data, you can see 
um, details about the data and every, anything that's hyperlinked, you can select. It'll show you more information. So in our presentation uh, objective slide, I mentioned that there were three things that I would like to go over and that's particip participation, reports and messaging. And here are some brief details about each topic. Um, the new analytics participation uh, or assignments, discussion and quizzes and page views. New analytics reports are CSV files and you can download those and you can bring them into Excel if you want. And the messaging, uh, I want to talk about messaging a little bit more, uh, specifically about score range, missing and late. So I'll start with uh, participation. How can I see participation data? And specifically, you can see participation in the uh, weekly online activity and the student tabs. The terms uh, page views and participations may seem vague at first. So I linked to something on our Canvas community that uh, discusses what those terms actually mean. And pretty in, in uh, just uh, a brief explanation, if uh, somebody can perform an action, uh, like if, if they submit something or if they can um, click on something, uh, that's called a view. If they uh, participate, I'm still looking in to see if likes, you know, like, for instance, if you have an announcement or you have likes associated with a discussion, I'm still investigating to see if those are showing up in the app. So here's, here's a good one. Are students reading my announcements? So um, this is one of the common questions that I've heard. Um, and my announcements, uh, that's a resource within the new analytics data. And that has participation associated with it and page views also. So by going uh, to our weekly online activity tab, we can see all of my students or some of my students and we can uh, view the announcements specifically. So let me, again, I, I have to share my screen. I have to show you. So I'm, I'm curious about if anybody's reading my announcements. Let's go back to the, the general. Get rid of these. I want to look at everybody. And I'm going to go into a data table and deselect this and go into data table. And I'm going to organize my resources by selecting the resource title. And in here, uh, I can see announcement one and announcement two. And this is also an announcement, but I forgot to call it an announcement in the title. And I think from now on, I'm going to call it an announcement just because it's easier to search for things. And um, so next time I title something, I'm going to say announcement something, just saying hi. And in here, I can see for assignment one that five of my students have visited that announcement. And they did it, you know, a few of them did it several times. They looked at the announcement a few times. Notice it's not all 10 and I can't tell who. So I can see how many, but I can't investigate who, at least not yet. Maybe somebody in the Canvas community might uh, bring up that. You never know if that feature might be added to the new analytics app. So this list view allows me to sort by clicking on the column's title. In this case, I would like to sort all my resources will help me find my announcements. So I click on resources and I find my announcements. So that when you come back to this PowerPoint, you'll be able to see some examples about how to uh, view specific resources. Okay, the data that um, is collected by the new analytics app is called near real time. And it takes about 24 hours for the data to show up. Um, I encourage instructors to have patience with this. Uh, when I was building the, the test course, it took a few months because I wanted to see the dates generated by the app and I wanted to see the dates associated with them. I'm and as I said, I'm still looking in to see if likes are making a difference inside the app itself, if, if that data is being reported. Yesterday, I thought to myself, well, maybe I should test out the test student. There's a student view that comes with Canvas. And uh, that student 
If you can remember inside the grades area, that's called test student. That's the actual name of that student. And I wanted to see if that information, that data is showing up in this new analytics app. And so far I haven't seen it. Usually I like to make the test student a perfect 100% score. So I can uh, do comparisons between that student and, and the other students. So the uh, reports that you can download are C CSV. And um, you just click on any link that looks like this download files link. I put an image right there so that you would know what it looks like. Um, what it does is it, I guess it uh, downloads to your um, downloads area and then you can bring it into Excel if that's how you like to look at your reports. So in the report tab, uh, there are several reports that are ready for you to run. Uh, you can select uh, the run report button. And so if you, and, and these are pretty much ready to go. You can uh, download your missing assignments, late assignments, excused assignments, your class roster and your course activity. Uh, I'd like to show uh, the messaging feature. With this app, we can send a message to a group of students that meet a certain criteria. And the group is blind carbon copied, and the only person that can identify the students in the group is the instructor. I think what I want to do is go back into the, the grades and uh, click on something, a discussion, and see if there's any, any missing. There was some late in there. Um, none are missing, so, but if they were, we could uh, click on the total and we can email them with this feature here, message students. We can also edit, and something I noticed today is that even though three students rep were reported, I'm now seeing nine. And I'll have to look into that and see why nine students are showing up instead of three that were originally reported. And I'm gonna say, hello, please finish your assignment. Spell it correctly. Finish assignments. And you can send it to those students and they'll get that in their inbox. Okay, so is there support for new analytics? Over time, I've seen more and more support becoming available. Remember this thing uh, showed up in uh, across all institutions seven months ago. And during that time, there were a lot of relocations of face-to-face uh, -face, um, classes that um, were no longer face-to-face. -face. So there was a lot of uh, people adjusting to the new way of teaching. And now that uh, we, things are somewhat settling down, uh, I think it's, it would be a great time for us to investigate um, the new analytics app and to see, because we can't see our students face to face really much anymore. And this is another view where we can see their performance, the timeliness of their performance. And there is support uh, showing up as time goes on. And I put some links here uh, to the frequently asked questions and to uh, some of the videos that have overviews of the uh, new analytics app. I'd like to uh, visit the Slido one more time. So I'm going to go back to this, uh, sharing my screen. Let's see if I can get to the Slido. And if anybody has anything, please raise your hand. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, we can unmute well you. Renee has a couple of questions and has said she would be more than happy to um, uh, open her mic and, and have a conversation. So, uh, one, if you could open Renee Richardson's mic so we can have that uh, chat with her. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, so I guess I was looking in it when I first to, to clarify one thing when I was first asking the question, <clears throat> I see now that you're we're directing us to a quote, capital N-E-W, capital A, new analytics section. And when you go under student profile, there are other things, the interaction report and particularly the access report. So my question turns out to be from the access report, which I'm seeing now from your demonstration is not included in what is considered the new analytics. So the new analytics seems to be a separate little piece um, that is different from what we have had before under access 
process report. So my question would be to Linnell, would you be able, since you have students, um, I could direct you on your screen to what I'm referring to, and then maybe yes. that could help answer the question. question. Absolutely, because I couldn't get to that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so pick one of your, go into people. Yeah, go under people and then pick any student and these are okay in the test student yeah and then go to then click the student's name again so test three user three okay and then see the options on the right above new analytics there's the access report so i thought that was all grouped into you know the new analytics options but when you go there that's where you can see page views um, yeah, and what's nice about the access report is I believe that it shows you specific access for that student. Right. And so you can drill down to the student level here because you're going yeah. in through the student profile. So you're getting at the student level data, except this was my question is that originally when this feature uh, was shown to us, it did not gather data from mobile devices which now, you know, anecdotally, it's probably maybe 50%. You know, I don't know exactly, but it's much higher percentage now that, than it was when we first started using Canvas. So I'm wondering how, how relevant that data set is to us if it's not including mobile device data. So uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure it does collect mobile device data. I believe that the access report is that, ref that was referring to not collecting mobile device. Yeah, if you click on it, you'll see what, go, if you click on it, if, it, if you have, if you signed in as other students, then it should have. So see how it has, you can't, you can't drill down to, so for example, quiz four, you know, they viewed it tw two times. You can't drill down to see every time, but you can see the most recent access. So if you check, say every week, a student, you know, that's not um, being, very, you know, participating very heavily, you could go in periodically during the week and check and see if they're, uh, what they're looking at, if anything. Well, I believe that you're going to have to, and let's hope that they don't get rid of the access area because it's really beneficial where I can actually see if the student, this particular student has visited my assignment. And I think the announcements are in here too. So I can see, notice that the, uh, the assignments and the announcements are different because the assignments are in the grade area and the announcements are not. So here, this is one of the most valuable things about the access report is because you can actually see that this particular test student three has read my announcement. Whereas I noticed that in the new analytics app, I can't see who looked at my announcements. And um, the, the, grade, the grade tab only shows me grades. It doesn't show me announcements. So that resource not, is not available um, directly inside of the new analytics app. So this is a, I, I believe we're going to have to use both if we can. So and I think the new analytics app is actually a bird's eye view of things. Understood. Yeah, and I just was wondering about the mobile device, but if you're sick, but again, I'll just, I'll just reach out to Canvas for that, for both, both pieces, both the um, analy new analytics and the access report. That's a great idea. And so Lynette, thank what, I, what I suggested is that that uh, that we should be able to test it through a mobile device and see if that uh, appears. So okay. if we can uh, go on the mobile device as test student and then <laughs> go back in there. But yeah, I, I think we can try that one out. Mm. Good point, Judy. Spoken like a true data analyst. So I'm running, I am new to Canvas and I'm here to learn more for an event we are running this weekend. And we also got a comment, as a program coordinator, I'm sure to use people and grades within the Canvas course. If I need more information, I will click on the student analytics. Looking forward to the information you have to share today. And then I'm not sure if my pre, oh, we read this one. I'm not sure if my previous answer was sent I'm new to Canvas and I will be using Canvas for our high school math day contest. I review their grades on assignments and feedback from TAs who also conduct grading. And typically by reviewing the grade book, looking at the actual grades as well as they are missing assignments. 
So it looks like if we use all of our resources, the grade book, new analytics, um, the access report. And so these things are extremely valuable for us to get to know our students and their behaviors. Um, when they need assistance, we can, uh, as instructors and as experienced people inside of education, we can use our, our years of experience to say, ah, I see this person is, I want to help this person or I want to uh, talk with them and uh, or it's interesting what they're doing. I think that we can communicate on on uh, their progress within the course. And thank you for joining me today. I really am very grateful for the uh, participation and the questions are extremely valuable. We're all learning together. <laughs> thank you very much. And um, I learned a lot today. And what we want to do is invite any of you as you are are trying these things out and learning new things about it to reach back out to us. You will get Linnell's uh, email address um, within the next couple of days. And as I responded to one of the people, you will also be receiving um, her PowerPoint. And then when the um, video for the session has been processed, we will send that information out as well. But what I would like for you to do is, as you're trying things out, make some notes and let us know, and we can uh, we can do an updated version of this uh, in a couple of months. So yeah, we truly appreciate uh, what you have, what you are as the instructors are doing, and how you are using the tools available to us to assure your students' success. We truly appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you, Linnell, for taking the time to dig deeper into this. We appreciate that as well. That's uh, that's a that's a, a a dive that I try to avoid when I can. can. <laughs> but we do thank have you. to. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Linnell, and thank you all for joining us.